Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This is an intermescent cataract. Let us watch management of this white intermescent cataract in this video. This is the main incision. Watch that the eyeball is being stabilized by a cotton-tipped Jensen bar. The main incision is done. Now a side boot is being done on the left side of the main incision. And one more side boot is being made on the right side of the main incision. The side boots are about 3 clock hours away from the main incision. An air bubble is injected. The aquas is replaced by the air bubble and now tripan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule. See how beautifully the dye is applied over the capsule and this is real time. Without waiting we can start washing out the dye. This is adrenaline and now the dye is washed out with a Simco cannula. This is a 23G Simco. The people has dilated very well. We can see a radial spoke like pattern in this case. The antechamber has been filled up with visco and now the capsule is punctured at the center and a C flap is raised. This C flap is held with the uterata forceps and a small rexis is done at this time. No attempt is made to do a large rexis that is to do a, an optimum sized rexis at this time. And now through this opening some cortex is removed. You can remove cortex with bimanual irrigation aspiration. You can uh, remove cortex by the FACO probe itself in the IA mode. Whatever you do, uh, do a thorough removal of some cortical matter from the anterior part and if possible some cortex from the posterior part. If you keep rotating the nucleus some cortex will come from behind along the equator and we can remove that. If we remove cortex thoroughly the intralenticular pressure reduces drastically the anti-capsule becomes flat and the risk of rexis runout is almost abolished. The antechamber is then filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose, a small nick at the margin of this small rexis and the uterata is now used to do an adequate size rexis. At this time there is no tendency of the anterior capsule to run to periphery. The anti-capsule is very much obedient at this time. So the optimum size rexis is done and now the FACO needle goes in with its bevel down. Some superficial lens matter is removed and now the handpiece is turned to make the bevel up and I am employing my technique which I call submarine chalk. The deep travels through the substance of the nucleus like a submarine and it is chopped. Rotate it 180 degree, hold one heminucleus and separate the two heminuclei completely. Each heminucleus is then subdivided This is the other heminucleus, it is also held and chopped. So we have got four large fragments. Each large fragment is then 
emulsified. If necessary, these large fragments are chopped into smaller pieces. See, there is no small particle of lens matter going here and there. The corneal endothelium is not being hit by any lens particle. Most of the time the endothelial damage occurs by fluid turbulence and by the pieces that hit the back surface of the cornea. Emulsification is carried out in the bag or in the anterior part of the capsular bag and never above the iris plane and the nucleus and epinucleus is nicely managed and now this is visco I'm going to use simco for removal of cortex from the inferior part and then the bimanual irrigation aspiration for removing the cortex from the upper part This is a 23G Simco. When we inject Visco in the anterior chamber, the anterior chamber remains formed very well for some time. And after that, if we lift the anterior leaf of the main wound by the shaft of the Simco cannula, then the anterior chamber is nicely maintained. The cortex from the upper part is being removed by bimanual irrigation aspiration cannuli and once the cortex is nicely cleaned a uh, lens is implanted in the capsular bag this is a hydrophilic this is a hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens and it has gone into the capsular bag the antechamber is maintained by irrigation not using visco this is called hydro implantation and now watch the anterior capsular rim the anterior capsular rim is nicely overlapping the optic of the intraocular lens all around and this is ideal capsular axis and now if we can manage intermessent cataracts manually in this way, do we need a femtolaser? No. We can do, we can manage intermessent cataracts very nicely without using a very costly machine which is used mainly for capsular access. And now this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is nicely formed and the case is concluded. The main wound doesn't need any hydration. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.